Hey, what's going on? Welcome to The Doug Show. It's Doug Cunnington here, and this is episode 50 of The Doug Show. So that's pretty cool, and it's a little bit of a, a milestone, though, you know, it's arbitrary, and I have um, a lot of other episodes queued up. So I've actually recorded several more, but this episode is the 50th one. And it's just going to be sort of a state of the podcast episode here. A few people have asked me about, you know, the number of downloads and just how it's going. And it's going well. I didn't have any like preconceived notions or ideas on the number of downloads that I was going to get or just if I was going to notice like a huge uptick in traffic to my blog, Niche Site Project, or over on YouTube, or whatever. Um, I actually, I kind of expected it to be a slow grind, and it would take a little while for things to work out. And um, that, you know, that is actually coming true (laughs) a little bit. And I, I think that's kind of the case on whatever platform you're moving over to. So I had a blog for years since around 2013. And in, uh, I guess it was 2017, so a couple of years ago, I started putting a lot more time and effort into YouTube. And it was slow growth over there. There's a learning curve for, you know, whatever medium you're working with and, you know, what to do on a like a daily basis, a weekly basis to improve over time. But again, I knew you YouTube was going to be a grind and it was, but over a couple of years, I've been able to build the channel up at my my own very slow pace, um, at my own speed. And I knew the podcast was going to be pretty much the same. And it's proving to be true. But, you know, luckily, it's not like I'm starting 100% from scratch because I do have the blog and YouTube. So there is a a little bit of like cross-pollination that can happen and just promotion that I can do on my own versus, you know, publishing a podcast and just letting it, you know, all happen naturally, which I mean, if you don't tell people about your podcast, probably no one's going to find it because there's so many podcasts out these days, but you know what, let's get to, let's get to the meat of this. So at this point, uh, as I'm recording this, I have about 19,000 total downloads and I have no idea if that is good or bad based on like what I've been doing. So as you know, as I mentioned, this is episode 50. And if you average it out, which I didn't do the math ahead of time, but uh, if you if you average it out, um, it looks like I'm getting a couple, um, two to 300 downloads per episode, roughly. And there are a few episodes that have gotten, um, I think, uh, not quite a thousand, but several hundred um, in the high like three digit zone. So that's that that's really good. And I'll mention those episodes. And as I'm looking through um, those episodes, seeing which ones are doing well, I'm like, oh, I see what uh, what topics people like. So the the top episode right now is uh, episode 23. That's with Evan, who is making eight thousand dollars per month, which is pretty cool. The second most popular episode is with Marty, and that was one of uh, one of the very early episodes. It was episode two, and that is a five-figure niche site, right? So that's when Marty hit the five hundred dollar per month mark. Technically, a five-figure niche site based on a valuation of you know roughly you know twenty-five x something like that which is conservative. The cool thing is I've had Marty back on and at this point he's making like 2K a month um, at at least. And again, it's been a popular episode. The third is with Ron Stefanski and that is I think another title with a high dollar amount. So I think that one was like 192,000 per year. And Again, that that is sort of cueing me in. People like to hear the success stories. People like to see a dollar amount or something like that in the title of the episode to really get them excited about you know what's what's to come, right? And when I think back to the episodes that I really enjoyed of podcasts that I listened to, a lot of times, especially in the beginning, you know, not so much now, but in the beginning, I was like listening to those to get inspiration. I was like, oh, there's um, 
there's this guy who is a project manager as well, and he's making a thousand dollars a month. And I was like, Oh, I, I can do that. Right. I was looking for like myself and other people, um, to, I guess, sort of prove to myself that it could be done. And I, I wasn't all that different from those people that were doing well. So it totally makes sense to me. And I, I, I enjoy doing those because everyone does a, uh, I guess they execute their plan in a different way. So even students of five figure niche site or people that are following like the keyword golden ratio sort of plan, they do things completely different because everyone has a different perspective. They have different sources of input and, you know, thank goodness they have way different skills than I do. So if they combine, you know, some good ideas from here and some good ideas from there, they may be able to come up with their own unique spin based on their own skills, which is very cool. So those seem to be the most popular episodes. And, you know, I'm always on the lookout for those. So if you actually have a success story, that you would like to share, it would be very cool. You could reach me at feedback at doug.show. Now, the cool thing with the podcast just in general is that I knew I had a lot of existing content that I could just repurpose. And for people who followed me on YouTube and do follow me on YouTube, you probably noticed that there were some cross posts where Maybe I rebroadcast or repackage um, an interview that I published on YouTube like a year or two ago, and I just took the audio, put an intro, put an outro, maybe some some more talking points that I've developed over time, and published it on the podcast. So it was a really nice way to, you know, publish more episodes early on without having to like record everything um, and, and recreate everything. I could just repurpose some content and it was much easier than having to start 100% from scratch. In fact, when I was drawing up my plans for just what I was going to publish, I, I think I came up with like 25 episodes um, before I recorded any of them. I came up with like 25 ideas and I think at least half or more were pretty much repurposed. So all I would need to do is take the audio from the existing interview that I already had and then, you know, record an intro and an outro in GarageBand, like very straightforward. So that has been really awesome. And as time has gone on, I've been able to, you know, do the same for like blog posts as well. So I haven't done that as much, but potentially that's going to be a little bit more of, um, I'm just going to put more effort into it. Now, the the hard part is, you know, I don't want to read a blog post. Um, It's funny, one of the podcasts that I got into back in the day, and I think it was about 2014, it was actually someone who, they're very popular, I won't mention who it is, they're very uh, popular as a blogger, but they literally would just like read their long blog post and it was kind of terrible. They read like in a very poor way, right? It was not good. You could tell they were reading it. And uh, the content though was so like good that I listened to it anyway, even though it sounded terrible. I don't even know if they used like a microphone for the first like 10 episodes. It was like they recorded it on their phone, like in a fucking bathroom or something. Like it was just not that great, but the content was solid. So I I stuck it out. Now I can't remember the original point that I was making there. Oh yeah. The person would just read blog posts. So I haven't gone too far down that route, but probably what I'm going to do just because I do have a lot of blog posts that I know would would translate well is potentially, you know, bring on a guest host like uh, Ron Stefanski, who's joined me on a couple episodes. I have another friend, uh, Dave Young, who's going to be helping out um, some in the future. Hopefully I haven't recorded anything with him recently, but um, to take one of those topics where obviously the blog post is my opinions and my observations, and then just go back and forth with someone else. Obviously it's really good to get other ideas in there, And from my perspective, it's great to have like a discussion where you potentially can go off on tangents 
with another smart person, um, assuming I'm, I'm smart as well, but you can go off on tangents, maybe come up with some new ideas and just have like some natural conversations versus like, Hey, I'm going to interview this person. Oh yeah. They have a product and oh yeah, they're going to be pushing it. There's not going to be that, right? I just want to have a conversation with some of my friends. We could, you know, talk shop. We can shoot the shit and have a nice time uh, discussing, you know, whatever the topic is. So I may be integrating some of that. Um, there may be a few of the blog posts where it's literally, it's sort of like a list of, you know, points. And it could be just like a quick hitter kind of episode where I go in, it's like 15 minutes long. Maybe I don't ramble on as much as I tend to do. Maybe I just keep them a little more brief. So I'm all about like experimental episodes and, you know, to, to the point of like slow growth and my YouTube, like subscriber growth and stuff like that. I knew that I was going to be going at my own speed because I was doing a lot of experimenting and I I'm planning on doing the same with the podcast and I know there are certain things that you can do both with YouTube or with a podcast where you can have like faster growth by doing certain things. I don't want to say pandering specifically, but that can happen on YouTube a lot, by the way. Um, like anyway, I don't, I don't want to pander to an audience that isn't the right fit for me. I'd rather go at my own slower speed and attract the people that, you know, want to work with me, that want to listen to me, that they enjoy whatever information I'm sharing versus, you know, getting more listeners, getting more views by, you know, you know making choices that don't really fit what I'm trying to do. So when I say it out loud, it makes total sense, but it's really easy on YouTube, especially. Um, that's what I could speak about more, I guess, um, in this particular topic. But, you know, maybe you're researching, you know, how to get more podcast downloads or how to get more views or more subscribers on YouTube. You end up with a lot of sensational videos that they're really kind of pandering. So once I kind of understood the general mechanics, I was like, you know what? I kind of understand what's going on. And when when I am doing something that doesn't really fit what my I guess I'll just say brand is trying to do what I'm personally trying to do. I needed to like question why and maybe make a different decision based on like what my goals are. Again, when I say it out loud, it sounds totally obvious, but when you're in the thick of things and you're like, how can I get more views to this video? You may make some weird choices. So I've tried to get away from making those weird choices. All right, a couple more topics that I want to just ramble on about a little bit. One is around interviews. So one thing that I wanted to do was like get some episodes out. I wanted to like learn the mechanics of putting the podcast out, start promoting it um, to my email list, start mentioning it on YouTube Um, just in general. And then I wanted to start doing like more interviews. So I waited a little while. I think I maybe got like 30 episodes out before I started trying to get like, like more interviews with, um, I would, I would just say like, I don't know, VIPs is right, but just like bigger influencers. So some of the more recent episodes, those have been interviews with, like big influencers or owners of like larger companies. So a couple, couple examples, and I'm sorry if I forget someone here, but I talked to Clayton Johnson, the CMO over at the Hoth, for example. So I've known Clayton for a few years just um, through, through the companies. And I was like, hey, let's, let's chat, let's talk shop. And we could talk about, you know, the Hoth and some of the products and we could talk about the Hoth in general. So that was super interesting. And I think it was a great interview. Um, I enjoyed just talking to Clayton. Another one was with Chris Pearson over at DIY Themes. So that was super cool. I ended up chatting with Chris um, and realized we had 
you know, a few things in common. So I, I hope I'll be able to get them on the show uh, another time, maybe on the YouTube side, because we may be tearing down some like landing pages and sites and that sort of thing. But that was really cool because I didn't realize how influential Chris was to the premium WordPress um, theme sort of area. And I learned a lot. So I've also been using that theme for a really long time since I started Niche Site Project. So I knew that uh, he was, you know, lightly promoting something that he would want to talk about. And he graciously accepted my invitation to do an interview. So that was super cool. Very smart guy as well. Um, the other one is with Genius Link. So I talked to Jesse Lakes over at Genius Link. Again, really accomplished person. Genius Link is a, you know, a very big company. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm going to be able to interview this guy. And it turned out great. So, and, and again, Jesse and I really enjoyed the conversation. Probably going to have him on again in the future to talk about like some specific points. So the whole idea there is I wanted to get some episodes out. I wanted to learn the mechanics. And then once I felt like more confident, actually, I felt confident <laughs> enough to probably interview them at the very beginning, but I kind of wanted to show the consistency of publishing the podcast and being able to say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to record our interview and I'm going to, you know, publish it on the podcast. I'm also going to put it on YouTube and potentially, you know, put it on, on a blog post, some pieces of it so that we really get a lot of mileage out of this. And that works, right? I, I could probably talk to people that wouldn't have talked to me before just because I have a plenty of episodes out there. Again, we're coming up on episode 50. So they know that if they spend the time talking to me, it's not going to be a waste, right? So I've actually done a handful of interviews with people who said, Hey, I'm just starting my podcast. I've been a fan. Um, can I interview you? And then I spend an hour with them chatting and then they don't do anything with the episode, right? They quit before they even started and they wasted my time, which is unfortunate, right? So that happens occasionally, but man, it is frustrating, especially when, you know, I, I get a little nervous, right? Before an interview and I'm, I prepare ahead of time. So if someone like claims an hour from me and I've, I've done work and I'm, I'm trying to do a good job and they don't do anything with it, very annoying, very frustrating, and in general, not going to work with them again, right? There's always exceptions, but in general, like if someone wastes my time on that level, it sucks. So part of like having a lot of episodes out, it's not, I mean, it shows like I'm going to do something with the episode. And by the way, there are other um, people that have spent time with me because I obviously did publish some episodes um, in the first 30 that were interviews um, that I had done on YouTube in the past. So they could see like if someone went to go and do the research that I actually, you know, put out some episodes, I've done interviews. I'm not going to necessarily like freeze up um, while we're, we are recording it or do anything weird. Um, so, you know, I think I've, I've gone on long enough about that, but um, yeah, at this point I feel pretty good approaching people with, you know, much bigger following who are more, well known and just saying, Hey, sure. Would love to interview you. And here are a couple other people. Here are some great interviews. And I can expect that, you know, a few hundred people are probably going to be listening to the episode. People are going to watch it on YouTube and all that stuff. And last thing here that I'll mention is, you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to do the podcast is the analytics aren't as good as they are on YouTube. So it sounds stupid to say that, but it kind of goes back to my point before where like on YouTube, you have such good insight on the analytics that it can sort of influence you to make choices that are kind of dumb, to be honest with you. So I've done this um, actually more than once, probably hundreds of times, I'm not 100% sure, but like I can look at the analytics on YouTube and see, you know, what titles seem to be the most popular for the videos, what 
thumbnails seem to be most popular. And then I could just like hammer those really hard. And it makes sense, right? I have analytics and data to back up making that decision to get more views, to get more likes and all that stuff. And it was sort of influencing me to make more videos and make like shorter videos and make certain decisions on the content that maybe it wasn't a great decision uh, when you look at the big picture of my entire business, right? So it's really hard to make the determination like exactly from an ROI perspective. However, when I look at the amount of time and effort that a video might take versus the money that it potentially could bring in directly, it, it doesn't make sense, right? So I, I don't monetize um, a ton of my videos and you know that's part of it. And the other thing is I don't get a ton of views per video. So I feel you know fortunate if I get you know, a few hundred views per video. And there are, you know, other people that get you know, tens of thousands or millions or whatever, depending on like what level you're looking at. But the, the point is you have so much visibility into the analytics on YouTube that you can start doing weird stuff. So quick little example, I haven't done this, but I've heard, you know, this is one of the, the stories that some of the YouTube influencers share, you could actually like see the viewer retention graph on videos. So for example, I'm just going to, you know, retell this from someone else. Basically, if you look and you start seeing like trends on when people drop off the video, so people can just stop watching the video or click on another one if they get bored. Um, basically you can potentially identify things that your audience doesn't like. Now that, that could be a good thing, right? Like if you keep saying filler words, like I'm now realizing that I'm probably saying a lot of filler words, I'm going to pause and try not to do it. But if you turn people off for a specific reason, then, um, you could see that in the viewer retention graph. And in, in this story, someone mentioned that they realized upon analysis that they would lose viewers when they said a certain word. They didn't say what the word was, but they would lose viewers whenever they said something. So when they stopped saying that word, then their retention improved. Now that's a extreme example. I feel like that's probably an exception, but the point is you at that point, you're like changing what you're saying because the audience doesn't like it. Now that may or may not be a good idea, but you get so much information from the analytics so you can make weird choices. All right, I said that like a thousand times, so I'll move on. With a podcast, you don't have that visibility, right? People complain about the lack of analytics that you get from a podcast. The word on the street is, you know, typically people will listen to a lot of a podcast because they're doing other things. You don't have to be as focused on um, a podcast as you do a video and potentially in a car commuting or if you're exercising or if you're doing, you know, chores around the house or something like that, you can listen to a podcast and not be like totally um, like distracted by the content that you're consuming. So, I knew that it could be a good thing for me not to have all that data on how people and how much people are consuming my content, especially, you know, the audio format. I could potentially go on and on for a really long time and people would enjoy it. Maybe, not always, but there's potential that, you know, people are going to enjoy it. And I know that because I used to listen to um, this beer brewing podcast and they the episodes were like three hours long. They were like three, four hours long at the really like super long ones. It was like a radio show. They had like little commercial breaks and that sort of thing called the Brewing Network. If you're into beer, um, you probably know it already, but it was a great podcast and they had multiple shows and I would listen to the really long shows for three hours. And then they had some other shows that were like 45 minutes to an hour and it was great. And I knew like, you know, me personally, like I liked long form content so that someone could totally geek out on beer or, you know, whatever the topic was, if it's like uh, internet marketing or something like that, it would be fine. And then obviously there's some 
I'm not going to compare myself to these podcasters, but like the Joe Rogan podcast goes on for a really long time. Like depending on how much time the interviewee has, Tim Ferriss podcast, he has some short episodes, but most of them, the ones that apparently do really well are the like super long form interviews that are an hour to three hours long. And those are great. Um, I, I enjoy the long form interviews. So that said, I knew that a podcast potentially would give me a way to share these longer stories, feeling comfortable that like people would consume them that are interested, right? I'm sure I lose some people at the length of the episodes or the topics or whatever, but you know, in general, people are going to be able to listen to 45 minutes of me talking about link building um, and enjoy it. Maybe some side stories as well, because I don't feel so, you know, time constrained. There's not as many distractions as YouTube, where YouTube, if I do a 45 minute video, I'm lucky if a handful of people watch it um, all the way to the end. I'm lucky if people watch like 15 minutes of it. I mean, that's the reality. YouTube has so many distractions. It's so good at recommending other videos that you would like that if I get boring just for a minute or 10 seconds or two seconds on YouTube, someone will just, uh, you know, click another video that has a sexy thumbnail. I mean, that is just the way it works, which I mean, it's great for the particular, you know, format. I mean, I like to watch YouTube videos, so I get it. I totally get it. But at the same time, I didn't want to be, you know, influenced so much by all the analytics and data that you can get. And I I was like, hey, you know what? I think a podcast will, you know, be a good way to get around that and be able to connect with other people, right? So some folks don't have time to watch a video on YouTube. However, they may have a long commute in their car and they may be able to. So, you know, maybe that one's even more important, but as I was thinking about all the analytics that I was looking at today, I was just thinking, wow, it sure is good. I don't know that much about the podcast side. I could just record these long episodes and feel good about it. So, all right, I'm going to end it here. Thanks everyone. I really appreciate all the support. We have uh, 50 episodes down. We got a lot more in the hopper here. We're going to be recording a lot more. And uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So really appreciate the support. If you're new to the show, you're coming in at a weird episode, but check out some of the other episodes. I mean, definitely check out the three that I mentioned um, with Evan, with Marty, with Ron. There's several other success stories out there that are super inspiring. So I suggest you start with those. Those are you know, just a good place to get into it. And uh, we'll catch you next time. So have a great day. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for listening to The Doug Show. I really do appreciate it. I mean, I'm just sitting here on my computer recording stuff and uh, you're listening to it. And I think that's awesome. If you enjoy the show and you know someone who maybe would be interested in it, please let them know. I think it would be fantastic if you help spread the word. If you are not signed up for the Niche Site Project email list, well, you're in luck. All you have to do is go to nichesiteproject.com, click the green button, enter your name and email address, and I'll send you a bunch of cool stuff about affiliate marketing, productivity, including all my templates. If you happen to not be subscribed to this podcast, please do subscribe. And don't forget, I welcome your questions. So you could send uh, your emails to feedback at doug.show. I got that really cool domain, doug.show, that's it. So feedback at doug.show. Or I'm going to leave my voicemail number in the show notes. So all you have to do is give me a buzz, leave a voicemail, and then I'll potentially put you on the air. So looking forward to it and we'll catch you next time.